hospital is unheard of disinfectant. Okay, it is the number one disinfectant that you would always you would see in the market right now. Okay? So people, so this this is a chemical that is known to disinfect viruses. Exactly. Almost as you know, with your alcohol-based systems, right? Um, you've been told, okay, well, go ahead and wipe surfaces. Go ahead and do that. Right. You can only get as much as you can. Right. Really. With EnviroShield, which I would show you, uh, listeners and guys watching uh, later on, you are totally disinfecting the whole facility from top bottom. Your regular disinfectants, they will do stuff, but what EnviroShield would do would get to hard to reach areas, and it has an immediate impact. So, so wh where would you use this machine? Okay, this machine should be used everywhere, anywhere, in schools, buses daycare facilities, restaurants, office, manufacturing plants, everywhere, even in public uh, places. And so I would definitely recommend you using this machine. And once I show you why and, and how it works, you will understand the reason why it's important okay. to have this machine. Okay, okay. so go ahead and uh, go, go ahead and, and show it. Okay. Give us a demonstration real quick, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. Exactly. And as you can see, it has an electrostatic charge to it. And uh, what I'll do is it's safe, so don't okay. worry. Okay. <laughs> it's safe. Um, I don't need to put my mask on. You don't need to put your mask on. Actually, I'm disinfecting you. You should be okay. happy I'm disinfecting it's, it's, you okay. at this point. All right. And it has a wraparound effect. So if you have your phone in front of you, your, you know, regular auto disinfectant, you put it in here, you're only disinfecting this side. Okay. So if you have a wraparound effect, as you can see, if I turn it around, it's already shown that it's also been disinfected because it has a negative charge to it. Okay. And so uh, it gets everywhere. I'm very important. I, I don't want to miss this. It does not leave any residue. Okay. A lot of disinfectants out there right now, they leave residue. They have, they, they have, you see the mist everywhere going around. This goes everywhere into your ventilation. You probably wouldn't even know something was done unless you do see it. And it has a very powerful effect. Okay. okay. One thing I will tell you, I say, it has a powerful effect. It is very, very tough on germs, but safe on the environment and you. Is this, is this EPA approved or this is, on that list or whatever? Good question. This is EPA approved. And when we say EPA approved, it's a category four EPA approved. There are four different types of categories. Category one means it's very dangerous. Category two tells you, okay, you know, you kind of be cautious, two and three. And then category four, it's safe for the environment. The most important thing is, like I said earlier, you have something that is EPA approved in the category four, and it has an immediate impact on no, disinfected no. to free uh, estimates. I should show you how it works. Uh, I would tell you, uh, you, uh, this is what we do because we know it's proven. Okay. okay. Uh, we would come out and show it to you, and you see it live, regardless of what it is, and then you can determine yourself what we are providing and giving to you in regards to what other people are providing. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah. I will be your host on this show. We are live from Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, on Afro Swag Media and Magazine. Today, we have a very special guest. I'll bring him now to the camera. That way, he can introduce himself. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be with you. Yes, uh, thanks for Good inviting Good to have me. you as well. So, um, do you mind telling us who you are? Um, well, <laughs> my name is Chike Wafia. I am the founding director of the Silicon Valley African Film Festival, which is a film festival that we host here in Silicon Valley, California. And this is our 11th year of operations. Wow, we are glad to have you. That was a brief introduction, but we have, I mean, you wear a lot of different hats. I'm just going to um, name few here. So you are, like you said, the executive director of Silicon Valley African Film Festival, and you are um, a theater director, educator, award winning. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Award-winning filmmaker and a member of the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. You are the founding director, like we said, of the African um, film festival and i mean you were like we said so many hard as we continue with this interview we will be able to let our audience know about um we will try our best okay <laughs> once again welcome to the show Thank so you. this is a big week for the silicon valley african film festival Yes. actually starting um i believe on friday today is the fifth. it starts on friday on the fifth it starts on, 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 on friday the, on the yes on, on the, ninth. the ninth yes yeah. can you please tell us what is going on this week oh wow um like i said this is our 11th year of operation and uh, we are really excited in spite of the challenges of covid 19 um, this is a festival that we typically hold in in san jose california which is the de facto, of course, uh, capital of Silicon Valley. Uh, but because of COVID-19 restrictions, we are not able to bring people into this space to enjoy the festival. And so it's gonna be an online version that we are rolling out this year. And nonetheless, we are very excited about the, the length and breadth of films, the diversity of voices we are representing. We will be showing 100 films from 40 countries and um, so we're gonna start on Friday and the festival goes all through the weekend. And uh, this is a festival, as we say, that is Africa through the African lens. And we are very unapologetic about what we do. Our festival is pretty much about showcasing Africa's seasoned and emerging filmmakers, telling Africa's story from their own perspective. Um, and so we are creating a platform for African storytellers to share their own stories with the world. And so throughout the weekend, um, we're going to be showing films across all genres. We have short films, we have animation films, documentary shorts, documentary long forms, as well as full length feature films. And, um, and one of the things we are doing this year is that we're giving it all away for free. So there is. Oh, no wow. Time. So we, we invite people, but you know, registration is required. You know, you have to get your ticket, but it's gonna be a zero dollar ticket. And then you can just comb through, see as many films as you wish, participate in the chats and the conversations that we're gonna have. And, um, and that's it. The opening ceremony is on Friday at 6 p.m. And um, it's gonna be on Zoom. And we, we invite people to join us and uh, catch some live entertainment, spoken word poetry, different kinds of things, and then hurry back into the screening rooms. This is absolutely exciting. Guys, you have just heard it. This is a free event. One simple thing, just go ahead and register. You can go to our Facebook page, go to LinkedIn, Instagram, Boma Link. Boma Link is a new African LinkedIn it's the the link is the go to our WhatsApp. I mean, everywhere on social media, go to the website. The link is there. You won't be able to miss this. Google it. That's it. Yes. Google it. Yes. You find the link. Go ahead and register. It's free. Like he said, one hundred films yes. from fourteen different. I'm assuming African countries. Yeah, forty, not fourteen. Four zero. 40. Four zero. Oh yeah. my God, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. weekend pack full of yes. surprises, full of the great things. Like he said, yes. we are to tell our own story. Yes. And this is what the Silicon Valley African Film Festival is about. Yes. A platform for all of us. We are proud to be African. Africa's seasoned and emerging filmmakers will be the, I'm assuming we'll be able to recognize them, right? <laughs> well, yeah, to some extent, you know, and uh, because it's an online event, uh, we're going to have filmmakers dropping in into the screenings to interact with the, 
those watching their films, you know, have them ask questions, get um, get a direct, you know, connection with the filmmakers about the work they do, why they're doing what they do, what we call a talk back session after a film screens. And so people are going to be pleasantly uh, surprised to catch some of these, you know, filmmakers, you know, film directors from all over the place. And one of the things we pride ourselves about is that over 50% of our films historically have been by women directors. And so um, we, we want people to come out and see these films. And that's a very exciting thing about our film festival that um, the women voices um, are coming through with, with force. And, um, and it's a beautiful thing to see that celebrated. In fact, last year, which was our 10th anniversary festival, um, we, we pointed that out and we lifted that up. In fact, we created a special panel discussion during our 10th anniversary film festival last year that we called African Women in Film. And we had women film directors on a panel here in Silicon Valley. We had from Nigeria, from Egypt, from Uganda, from Rwanda, from South Africa. I mean, there we are all, these sisters, we're all sitting on a panel on stage and it was a fantastic thing to just have them go at it, you know, and just talk about their journey and their work and all of that stuff. And so um, we have amazing film directors all across the African continent. Um, there are so many surprises. Yes, we always hear about Nigeria because of Nollywood, but I just, you know, coming to our festival, you get to see films from Loseto, you know, films from, Bot from Botswana, from Somali, mm -hmm. from, you know, from places. And, um, and so you get to discover the African continent. You get to see, filmmaking, telling Africa's story from different perspectives. And that's the beautiful thing about our film festival. Like I said, it's 40 countries, four zero countries that we are representing this year. And, um, and we're also now doing a spotlight on our diaspora brothers and sisters. And so we have a film from Brazil, for instance, that we are showing. We have a film from Haiti, from Jamaica, from United States. You know, we show a couple of films, you know, all connected to Africa but over 30 something countries are from the African continent. And then we, 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 we kind of do a panorama of the diaspora and bring that into context. This is very exciting. And if you are watching, you can catch them on Twitter. And those are the handles, Facebook and Instagram. Go ahead, follow them, like them on social media. This is an event you don't want to miss. Again, it's starting on Friday and it will continue throughout this weekend. So while you were talking about some of the surprises that we'll be having at the event, I can see the passion. I can see the passion about Africa, about African movies, about the, I mean, tell me a little bit about your background. Like how did you get in this field and all the amazing accomplishment that you have. I mean, tell me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how much time we have, but um, of course I was born in Nigeria. That's where I grew up. And, uh, and growing up, um, I was very fortunate to have gone to um, a very respectable, you know, high school, if you will, um, called Government College in Wahia, which produced a lot of, if you've read the book, Things Fall Apart by Chinu Achebe, um, people like him went to that school um, decades before we came. And so it was a very, very prestigious school that had a lot of discipline and um, had groomed and trained some of Africa's foremost people in the world of literary arts, like Chinu Achebe and a whole range of others. And so when some of us came through, um, you know, there was just that pride of, of stepping in those shoes of those kinds of people. And um, it was a high school that really encouraged us to explore our creativity. Um, mm -hmm. And I was, I was very much uh, at the forefront of that. And so I was, I was involved in theater all through the high school and then went on to college. Interested enough, you know, I went on to college in Lagos and majored in business. But while I was in business, I was part of the college you know, drama and theater company. 
And uh, so I've always been, and, um, and all through these years, I've always been doing television and theater, um, even though I was studying business and doing other things. But it's always been my first love, um, being in the creative arts. And uh, uh, luckily, my, my mind and my brain and all of that allowed me to do anything else I wanted to do. So I studied business and did all that stuff. Then when I finally came to Silicon Valley, I was working at the corporate strategic planner for a biotech company. And, mm -hmm. um, and those were very enjoyable days because of course I was young and I was doing great things, but the corporate world was so busy that I, I started having withdrawal syndromes about not being able to engage. I've all, before then I was always able to do both, you know, do mm -hmm. business and do, theater and uh, but the corporate world in Silicon Valley was crazy I couldn't handle both and uh, so anyway after a while I knew I needed to get out of that I needed to go find my joy find my passion um, it wasn't all just about making money um, I was barely 20 something years old and uh, so when the time was right my mentor and I worked through it and I began my transition out of the corporate you know spectrum and uh, and then went fully into my passion, which is film, television, theater. And, um, and it's 20 something odd years later, I would do it all over again. I'm so excited to be doing what I love to do. And um, I've been blessed, I've been lucky, and um, I've been mentored. I've, uh, uh, no one does it all by themselves. And, uh, uh, but it's just been a wonderful, I mean, it's got its ups and downs, no doubt, but I think when one is pursuing one's passion, um, it makes it easier to overcome some of those obstacles that are bound to be in your way. And and twenty something years later, um, I'm really I'm really happy that um, that I, I I began to pursue this, and 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 this is where we are. <laughs> and we are glad that I mean God chose you for this field, and it I mean we are very proud of everything that you're doing for the motherland and i can see that you served on a lot of committees especially when it comes to grant can you tell me a little <laughs> yeah about well yeah um again i've been i've been in silicon valley i mean i just came straight to silicon valley and you know about 30 something years ago and i never left silicon valley so i've been part of this ecosystem for a very long time. And so while I was in the corporate world, and then when I transitioned into private practice, um, I, you know, I was producing television for the local television station, finally you know, got on their board of directors and then became their board president. And I ran that station as a board president for about five years. Um, and um, and you know, continue to participate in the civic life of the city. And that's one thing I encourage my brothers and sisters that even though we, when we migrate to different countries, and I know you have international listeners, that is important not just to be in your own silos, participate in what's going on, because um, what happens on the school boards affects your children, affects you. What happens at the city council affects you. And so it's always been me. Uh, yes, I was in student union politics back in Nigeria, but um, I've always believed that one needed to you know, connect with what was going on. And so I've been fortunate that um, as my journey continued, uh, I was invited to join the board of trustees of the Arts Council Silicon Valley. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I, I was a board president of the Mountain View television station. Um, I was invited to join the board of the local chamber of commerce in Mountain View. And, you know, and, and just continuing to push and represent us in, in some of these spaces. Um, started getting me a little bit of recognition here and there where I, you know, even at the national stage, the National Endowment for the Arts asked me to join their faculty when they set up what was called the National Education Leaders Institute. Um, and, um, and I was on that for over five years, working with the National Endowment for the Arts um, and so forth and so on. And then just very recently, as, as recent as last week, the city, of San, the city of San Jose just appointed me as a creative ambassador for the city of San Jose. Um, but, um, but all through that, it's, it's about 
participating. It's about showing up. It's about uh, making getting your voices heard and and making sure that um, that we are represented in in some of these spaces that oftentimes uh, are confusing to people. You know. You know, congratulations on the appointment as of last week. That I mean, it just keeps adding on, and that tells a lot about your leadership skills. And I mean, it's it's amazing. Everything about you, it's amazing. So <laughs> tell me, <laughs> tell me, the yeah. event this weekend starting on Friday. The team is Africa through. The African lens. Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit ab more about it. Well, you see, just as the name implies, um, and to understand why that is our theme, one has to understand why I even started the film festival. And like you and I know, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners, um, you know, our viewers, um, the image of Africa, the understanding of Africa outside of Africa is very, very shameful to say the least the ignorance that people have about this place we come from they just it's 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 mind-boggling and what i call there's still a tarzan view of africa there's a national geographic view of africa as a place that is desolate as a place where people are always begging desperate poor deprived looking for aid and all of that kind of stuff and and so coming to Silicon Valley and being in the midst of all this wealth and technology and creativity, I felt that uh, I got so tired. You know, I would be I would be invited to speak about Africa because um, unapologetically, I'm always representing Africa wherever I go. And I will be on panels and I will teach. I've been on the faculty of one of the colleges here teaching African history at a point. And so it got to the point where I said, you know, the stories that are being told about Africa. Um, is just is, is just deploring. However, if you think about it, and in my research and my working even with my students then, I used to ask them, how did you get all these images? Where did you get it from? And it's from television, it's from film, it's from newspapers, mm -hmm. it's from books. So it is the narrative that is being sold that people have believed and imbibed. And so mm -hmm. this, and oftentimes when these stories are told by people that are so far removed from our reality. Mm -hmm. They paint Africa in very, very distorted, you know, ways that begins to create what I call blurred perceptions, blurred interpretations mm -hmm. of Africa and its people. And so what I felt I wanted to do was, if it is stories, if it is images that are making this kind of thing happen, then maybe we should use the same tools to begin to flip the script. Maybe we should use the same tools to begin to change the narrative. And what better way to do it than to go get the Africans themselves that know Africa, live the experience, and are from the place to bring to us Africa through their own lenses. And that's what this is about. So it's Africa through the African lens. It's telling Africa story by Africans through their lens. And so that's what our film festival is about. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of echoes the, the long, sometimes overused cliche that until the lion learns to speak, the tale of the hunt will glorify the hunter. And so for us, we are Africans and we want to tell our story ourselves, period. And that's what we present. Wow, this is very brilliant. You know, it just makes sense. And here at Afro Swag Media and Magazine, that's what we call the ethnic wave. Let's engage with one another. Let's narrate our own story. And let's empower each other. That's all we are about here at Afro Swag Media and Magazine. We will take a brief um, break, a little commercial, and we will come back. Don't go away. Keep on watching.
Welcome back everyone. You can see me because I have a flyer on here and we are talking about the 11th annual Silicon Valley African Film Festival and we have the promoter, the executive director today. Please go online, check them out and register. It's a free event this year and it's going to be on Zoom. You cannot miss it. Google it go to the various platforms and you'll be able to engage, you'll be able to connect. Like I, I just said, you'll be able to see all the 100 films over 40 countries represented, filmmakers, and today um, we have Chike Mwofia, he's the promoter, the executive director. I'm going to bring him back to the camera so that we can continue this amazing conversation about our motherland, Africa. We are proud to be African. Hello, Chike. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for being on this show. It's a privilege to have you. And thank you for the amazing things that you're doing. Thank you for bringing this event to us. So on Friday, can you tell us a little bit about the agenda? How is our day going to go? Um, well, the, the, um, the thing is, because it's an online film festival, um, all the films are going to be already. Um, and so if anybody goes to our website or clicks on the links that you're sharing, they can even right now, they need to, as a matter of fact, right now begin to go pick up, you know, you look at the, the films, you go through the list. If you go to the website, our website, you can actually download a schedule, a PDF schedule and take your time and flip through highlights. Oh, I, I want to see this. I want to see that kind of thing. And then you can go back and start clicking on get tickets. So you start picking tickets for whatever you want to see. And then the system will automatically remind you, oh, your film is about to start in one hour. So this is not going to be video on demand. This is going to mimic actual film screening. So if a film is scheduled to screen at one o'clock, it will auto start at one o'clock. So if you come five minutes late, you're just going to join the screening. And when that film finishes screening, it's going to deactivate. We are not doing video on demand because we want to protect our filmmakers. Um, some of them uh, might have distribution deals with other online distributors, and we don't want them to, to suffer because some of these online distributors might say, you've already put your film on video on demand, so we're going to have issues with it. So that's what we are doing. Friday, we start screening films at about 1 p.m. Um, all the schedules are already published online through the link. And, um, and there are going to be two, uh, two tracks that are running. So it's almost like two screening rooms. Uh, so you're going to, at 1 o'clock, for each of the time blocks, there will always be two options. You might be choosing between seeing a documentary and seeing a drama, for instance, or seeing an animation film or seeing something else. So you kind of pick and choose what you want to see. And you can jump from one room to the other. You can see you know, some films over here, you pop out, you see some other films. So we have a stack of films already loaded up for Friday, starting at one o'clock. We're going to show some, you know, what we call Africa in shorts, which is a 60 minute of short films, about five different short films in that one hour on one side. And then we're going to show some documentary short films on the other side. And then after that, we're going to show some long films. And then we come back again. You know, it keeps going like that. And then by six o'clock, we stop screening for just about one hour and a half to do our formal opening ceremony. So we don't want people to miss the films if they, if they are participating or enjoying our opening ceremonies. And then we do the opening ceremonies. We have a flag presentation, libation ceremony, you know, live entertainment, all of that stuff. And then people can go back and continue watching films. On Saturday, we start early from about 10 in the morning till about 10 p.m. On Saturday, we are showing films all through the day, two different screening rooms. So anytime you pop in, you can watch anything you want to see. And it keeps going all the way through. On Sunday, we do the same thing. And then about 3 p.m. on Sunday, 
we're going to do our award ceremony. Again, there will be no, no screening happening so people can join us and participate in that, you know, in the award ceremony. And then they can go back and see a few more films and we close the festival. So it's, uh, yeah, my staff and team members have been working for the past few weeks, just uh, uh, putting, putting this stuff together. And it's going to be exciting, really, really exciting. Wow, this is amazing, guys. What a treat. Like they are spoiling us, 100 films. And you just heard the schedule and you can go to their website and they link it everywhere on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Boma link on the website, WhatsApp everywhere. Don't miss this event. Don't miss it. 100 films and African yeah. films, documentary from 40 different African countries from 1 p.m. on Friday is going to run like, it's like going to the movie. Come that's on, it. guys. Yep, yep, that's it. Going yeah. to the movie and we have two different screens and yeah. you can go back and forth from one room to the other one. Come on, this is amazing. Yeah. During this time of COVID-19, look yeah. at what this team is putting together. Yeah. They're actively working for us. Guys, don't miss it. If you have something going on this weekend, cancel it. This is worth <laughs> canceling everything to take advantage. I mean, come on, I, I, I'm going to be there. I've already registered 100 yeah. African movies and documentaries, yeah. selling yeah. our own stories, narrating yeah. everything. Yes. And we have, uh, yeah, and I must say, we also have animation films, um, yeah. films for kids. And if you see the way we've programmed this stuff, like the early hours, about 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning on Saturday and Sunday, we have what we call Africa Animated. So you can bring your kids together and have them watch these African animation films and, um, and just have fun with them. Uh, and then, or you can, you can actually register your kids to be watching the animation on one side and you just take your laptop or your or your phone and be watching a movie on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, um, And like you said, even if you have something you're doing or things to go, the films are gonna be there all through the day. So if you look at the schedule and you you're busy between 12 and 2 p.m., that's okay. You know, by 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., if you have free time, log on, catch a film, catch two films or whatever. And that's the way we've done it so that people can just um, pop in and out of the screening. Uh, we have people that just stick with it and just binge all the way through because they don't want to miss anything, which is great. You know, mm -hmm. but those that want to just come in and see something at a certain time when they're free, or see something else, that's that's wonderful as well. And like I said, um, thanks to our sponsors, um, the California Arts Council, the Silicon Valley Creates, the um, Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Um, I mean, these are people, even the, the county, the city of San Jose and the county of Santa Clara um, grants program, historical grants program, and some other community um, supporters we've had, um, thanks to them, we are able to offer this year's film festival free of charge to everybody. And so that's no excuse. <laughs> Absolutely, there is no excuse. And during this time of COVID-19, you can just relax in your sitting room, in your, I mean, the comfort of your home and enjoy everything brought to you by the Silicon Valley Film African Film Festival. Yes. Talking about the sponsors, we would like to thank Jen Pro of Omaha. We would like to thank everyone that made this possible for us to have Chike Nwofia. And I have one 50 second video here that I'm going to play. Don't go away. Um, stay with us. We will be right back. Jampro has been providing commercial cleaning services for over 25 years. And during that time, we discovered the need to provide a disinfection process that is safe, efficient, and effective. Our solution is EnviroShield, Jampro's total disinfection system. 
Our process adds an electrostatic charge to the disinfectant as it is dispersed, which allows it to fully and evenly coat touch points, surfaces, and objects. EnviroShield uses an EPA-approved disinfectant, which is safe for you and the environment, leaving no residue while effectively killing 99.99% of viruses and bacteria. Whether it's a one-time or regular frequency application, JamPro services different risk profiles and everything from small offices to large distribution centers. To learn more about JamPro, EnviroShield, and the science of disinfecting, visit our website or contact your local JamPro office Yes, contact them I mean, for every need regarding um, disinfecting a building, business owners. During this time of COVID-19, it's critical that you take your um, precautions and everything to make everybody safe. Like we said, we have Chicken Wolfia. We will bring him back. That way we can um, talk about the, the event that they're bringing us this weekend. Um, Hello again. Hello. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for being here. So what are some of the things that you can tell us? I don't know if you can tell us a little <laughs> bit about the awards, the opening uh, ceremony and the closing ceremony. Well, um, for the opening ceremony, like I said earlier, uh, we, we are going to have, typically when we have this in person, it is a big, our festival is huge. Um, throughout the weekend, when we used to have it, in, when we had it in person up until this year, uh, which we will continue next year, just to let people know, we, our festival has become a full-blown cultural festival. There's African food, there's African market, there is a fashion show, we have cultural dances. We do, I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy, um, it's a crazy celebration of Africa in one weekend. Uh, wow. but, because, but because we are online this year, we've kind of tried to figure out what little things can we still do. And so for the opening ceremony, um, we always have this libation ceremony by a Ghanaian elder, which is just fantastic to witness. And then we present the flags of all the countries in the festival. So mm -hmm. we're going we're to try and do something similar to recognize all the countries and their flags. Uh, we're going to have some live entertainment, um, either spoken word or both, a balafon player from Burkina Faso and that type of thing. And then, of course, um, there might be some surprise guests that would show up and say hello to people and that type of thing. Um, and then we, um, we it's not going to be a long opening ceremony because we want people to you know, get back and keep watching their films. For the closing ceremony, we come back again with you know live entertainment, um, some guest appearances, and then we give out the awards. Um, you know, we give awards in all the different categories that uh, that we have submissions in. You know, animation. We have awards in documentary films for the short ones and the long ones. Awards in narrative films, uh, and then we have an award we call the Emerging Filmmaker Award an award we give to um, an emerging filmmaker who maybe this is their first film or you know, a second film, um, a filmmaker that we see or the jury sees has a lot, um, a lot ahead of them based on just a few things we noticed and we recognize that filmmaker. Um, and there are a couple of surprising awards that um, our filmmakers are gonna enjoy in terms of what they're gonna get for the awards. Um, um, and uh, we can't reveal them now, but one of the one of the Silicon Valley companies that uh, our filmmakers are going to be happy about um, has whispered a couple of things to us, and so we're going to be revealing that at the closing ceremonies. You know, um, to everyone watching right now, we said a lot, a lot of surprises waiting for you, and all you can do is to go ahead and register. It's a free event once again. You don't want to miss this. So Chike, what last comment do you have for us? Well, I, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me and, um, and I want to commend you for the work that you're doing with Afro Swag. Uh, um, I don't know if you know, we actually have put your logo on our website as one of our you know, festival partners and it links to your site. So- Oh uh, my you God. Know, yes, you know. <laughs> 
So, but um, it's good to see, um, you know, you know, people like yourselves that are doing amazing work promoting the African image um, because we need that. We we definitely do, and and there are. And you know, and this place we come from, you know, has amazing things to offer the world. And people like you um, are, are needed to to keep bringing that out so that people can understand and celebrate. And so, um, I'm telling your viewers and fans to join us this weekend and uh, and come and let us celebrate Africa. That's what that is. You heard it. Join us and come. Let us celebrate Africa. Africa through African lens. Once yes. again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for the honor. It's a privilege to have you. We have come to the end of our today's show, but we will see you this weekend starting Friday at the 11th festival. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.